experience is the only source of knowledge in the world religion is the only science where there is no surety because it is not taught as a science of experience this should not be however there is always a small group of men who teach religion from experience they are called mystics and these mystics in every religion speak the same tongue and teach the same truth this is the real science of religion as mathematics in every part of the world does not differ so the mystics do not differ they are all similarly constituted and similarly situated their experience is the same and this becomes law in the church religionists first learn a religion and then begin to practice it they do not take experience as the basis of their belief but the mystic starts out in search of truth experiences it first and then formulates his creed the church takes the experience of others the mystic has his own experience the church goes from the outside in the mystic goes from the inside out religion deals with the truths of the metaphysical world just as chemistry and the other natural sciences deal with the truths of the physical world the book one must read to learn chemistry is the book of nature the book from which to learn religion is your own mind and heart the sage is often ignorant of physical science because he reads the wrong book the book within the scientist is too often ignorant of religion because he too reads the wrong book the book without all science has its particular methods so has the science of religion it has more methods also because it has more material to work upon the human mind is not homogeneous like the external world according to the different nature there must be different methods some special sense predominates in every person one person will see most another will hear most so there is a predominant mental sense and through this gate each person must reach his mind however through all minds runs a unity and there is a science which may be applied to all this science of religion is based on the analysis of the human soul it has no creed no one form of religion will do for all each is a pearl on a string we must be particular above all else to find individuality in each no man is born to an any religion he has a religion in his own soul any system which seeks to destroy individuality is in the long run disastrous each life has a current running through it and this current will eventually take it to god the end and aim of all religions is to realize god the greatest of all training is to worship god alone if each man chose his own ideal and stuck to it all religions religious controversy would vanish this world is not for cowards do not try to fly do not look for success or failure join yourself to the perfectly unselfish will and work on you must know that the mind which is born to succeed joins itself to a determined will and perseveres you have the right to work but do not become so degenerate as to look for results work incessantly but see something behind the work even good deeds can find a man in great bondage therefore you should not be bound by good deeds or by desire for name and fame those who know this secret pass beyond this round of birth and death and become immortal the ordinary sanyasi gives up the world goes out and thinks of god the real sanyasi lives in the world but is not of it those who deny themselves live in the forest and chew the cud of unsatisfied desires are not true renouncers live in the midst of the battle of life anyone can keep calm in a cave or when asleep stand in the whirl and madness of action and reach the center if you have found the center you cannot be moved the idea of psychology in the west is very much degraded psychology is the science of sciences but in the west it is placed upon the same plane as all other sciences which means that it is just by the same criterion of utility how much practical benefit will it do to humanity how much will it detract from our rapidly increasing pain such is the criterion by which everything is judged in the west people seem to forget that about 90% of all our knowledge cannot be applied in a practical way to add to our material happiness or to lessen our misery 
only the smallest fraction of our scientific knowledge can have any such practical application to our daily lives. This is so because only an infinitely small percentage of our conscious mind is on the sensuous plane. We have just a little bit of sensuous consciousness and imagine that to be our entire mind and life. But as a matter of fact, it is but a drop in the mighty ocean of subconscious mind. If all there is of us were a bundle of sense perceptions, all the knowledge we could gain could be utilized in the gratification of our sense pleasures. But fortunately, such is not the case. As we get further and further away from the animal state, our sense pleasures become less and less, and in a rapidly increasing consciousness of scientific and psychological knowledge, our enjoyment becomes more and more intense, and knowledge for the sake of knowledge becomes the supreme pleasure of the mind. We are all slaves to our senses. We are slaves to our own minds, conscious and subconscious. The reason why a criminal is a criminal is not because he desires to be one, but because he does not have his mind under control and is therefore a slave to his own conscious and subconscious mind and to the mind of everybody else. He must follow the dominant trend of his own mind. He is forced onward in spite of himself, in spite of his own better promptings, his own better nature. He is forced to obey the dominant mandate of his own mind. We see this in our own lives constantly. We are constantly doing things against the better side of our nature, and afterwards we upbraid ourselves for doing this, and wonder what we could have been thinking of, and how we could do such a thing. Yet again and again we do it, and again and again we suffer for it and upbraid ourselves. At the same time, we think that we desire to do it, but we only desire it because we are forced to desire it. We are all slaves to our own and to everybody else's mind. It makes no difference whether we are good or bad. We are led here and there because we cannot help ourselves. We think because we have to think. We act because we have to. We are slaves to ourselves and to others. Deep down in our subconscious mind are stored up all the thoughts and acts of the past, not only of this life but of all other lives we have lived. This great boundless ocean of subjective mind is full of all the thoughts and actions of the past. Each one of these is striving to be recognized, pushing outward for expression. We take these thoughts for natural desires, talents, etc. It is because we do not realize their true origin. We obey them blindly and unquestioningly. In the West, the powers of the mind, especially unusual powers, are looked upon as bordering on witchcraft and mysticism. The study of fire psychology has been retarded and is being identified with mere alleged psychic phenomena as is done by some mystery-mongering orders of Hindu fakirs. Physicists obtain pretty much the same results the world over. They do not differ in their general facts or in the results which naturally follow from such facts. This is because the data of physical science are obtainable by all and are universally re recognized, and the results are logical and conclusions based upon these universally recognized facts. In the realm of the mind, it is different. Here, there are no data no facts observable by the physical senses and therefore no universally recognized materials from which to build a system of psychology after their being equally experimented upon by all who study the mind. If you intend to study the mind, you must have systematic training. You must practice to bring the mind under your control. To attain to that unconsciousness uncon from which you will be able to study the mind and remain unmoved by any of its wild gyrations. Otherwise, the facts observed will not be reliable. They will not apply to all people and therefore will not be truly facts or data at all. Among those who classes who have gone deeply into the study of the mind, the facts observed have been the same. No matter in what part of the world such persons may be or what religious belief they may have, the re results obtained by all who go deep enough into the mind are the same. The mind operates by per perception and impulsion. 
for instance the rays of the light enter by eyes are carried by the nerves to the brain and still i do not see the light the brain then conveys the impulse to the mind but yet i do not see the light the mind then reacts and the light flashes across the mind the mind's reaction is impulsion and as a result the eye perceives the object